it was discovered many years ago that cord blood is actually a really rich source of blood stem cells, such as that that is usually found within the bone marrow. Um, and one of the advantages of using cord blood stem cells is that it's a product that can be collected and stored, unlike um, bone marrow donors where you really need to have the donor um, readily accessible to have their bone marrow harvested at the time that it's needed. Um, one of the great things with cord blood is that the blood stem cells do not need to be a perfect match with the patient that they're going into. And this means now that nearly everyone who requires a bone marrow transplant will find a suitable cord blood donor somewhere around the world, if not in Melbourne or Australia, then certainly elsewhere around the world. The cord blood bank here in Melbourne is one of three public cord blood banks in Australia. We belong to the Auscord network of cord blood banks and um, we were set up to collect cord blood from mums who want to donate their cord blood um, for the use of people all over the world. Um, we employ specially trained midwives who collect cord blood from three of the hospitals around Melbourne. Basically that involves um, following the delivery of the baby once the cord is cut the um, blood can be collected by just inserting a needle into the umbilical vein and allowing the blood to drain out um, into a bag. And this is either done um, before the delivery of the placenta or following, if it's a caesarean um, delivery, it will be collected following the delivery of the placenta. And um, it's quite a, it doesn't hurt at all, doesn't harm the baby in any way. The baby's already been delivered. Um, that cord blood is then taken or sent to the laboratory here at the Royal Children's Hospital where it is processed and um, it's very minimal processing. Really we just spin the bag of cord blood, we take off the plasma and we remove the red cells to be left with a white cell um, blood product which, it, which contains the blood stem cells um, within that product. That is then frozen and um, stored in our liquid nitrogen tanks to be there ready to be used if anyone requires a bone marrow transplant. And so we have a readily accessible source of over 8,000 cord blood units here that we um, can send out for patients requiring a bone marrow transplant. At the moment, all the cord blood that we send out for transplants is being used um, for bone marrow transplants. So any disease that can be treated with a bone marrow transplant can actually, you can actually use cord blood instead of bone marrow. Um, so the types of diseases of the patients that we're sending out units for includes um, leukemias, aplastic anemias, um, metabolic storage disorders, immunodeficiencies. So it's not just leukemia. Um, it can be just things that have gone wrong with their blood and you just um, want to replace the blood system of the patient. I think one of the most exciting developments within the cord blood field has been the discovery um, that you can use two cord blood units to transplant one patient. So in the past, cord blood transplants were really only limited to baby or to children and small adults because you're really limited by the number of stem cells within one cord blood unit. A cord blood unit is what we call all the blood that you can get from one placenta in an umbilical cord that's known as a cord blood unit. And so there's really a finite number of stem cells in there. Um, what was discovered a few years ago now is that you could actually use two cord blood units for one patient, which doubles the number of stem cells available for the patient. And this means now that um, adults can have cord blood transplants, whereas in the past they were too big. And um, actually a good proportion of the cord blood units that we send out from the bank now are actually for the transplantation of adults. We do know that cord blood does contain other stem cells other than blood stem cells. 
and um, there are stem cells there that have been shown to be able to give rise to nerve, muscle and bone. Um, so I think the future potential of cord blood is very exciting. In the bank here we have stored just over 8,000 cord blood units and to date we have sent out just over 250 of those cord blood units for the treatment of patients all over the world. Um, quite a few of them are used within Australia and that was one of the main reasons that the public banks were set up in Australia so that we had a ready source of Australian cord blood units for Australian patients. However, having said that, we do send um, probably two thirds of our units go overseas and they've gone everywhere. They've, um, the US, the UK, Spain, France, um, all, all over the world. And one of the things we're required to do here is, um, according to our TGA licence, is to actually follow up how those patients go after transplant because that's a very important determinant of the quality of our cord blood units. We need to make sure the patients are, are um, surviving and, and doing well. Because we're part of the whole cord blood banking network and we have access to the bone marrow donor registries all over the world, we do still import cord blood units for treatment of patients here if there's no cord blood units within the Australian cord blood banks. Um, since we have our own cord blood banks, the necessity to do that has decreased greatly, but occasionally we do still need to import a cord blood unit.